Hello, this is McD the Beast, and this is McD Sports 4 coming to you today with my college football preseason top 25 for the 2023 college football season. Before I continue, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Please subscribe to your channel. Greatly appreciate if you do that. Uh, we are officially kicking off the college football predictions here. We're going to kick off with, with my top 25. We'll go one through 25. I'll talk a little bit about each team. Each team is going to get its own video of a uh, season prediction video as well in this top 25. So uh, you're hearing me talk about more about each team in those videos. So let's get into it. Uh, one through 25, then teams I considered. And then I'm going to, I started a new section of this video this year. Dark Horse team. So the past two years, there has been teams that uh, were not even considered a top 25 team. E even though I will argue we, in 2021, I did have Michigan up at 24 in my preseason top 25 poll. Uh, TCU last year, I was absolutely wrong about that. But um, they came out of nowhere and basically made the playoffs. Uh, so I'm going to give you a team in each Power 5 conference. And then I'm going to give you a group of five team that could come out of nowhere and, and give you uh, and make a uh, New Year's Six Bowl appearance that no one's talking about. So let's get into it. We'll kick off one through 25. Number one, the number one team in the McD Sports 4 preseason top 25 college football poll for 2023 is going to be the Michigan Wolverines. Uh, and the reason for this is because you look around the top teams that people are considering. That if you look at the top eight teams from the tw from the uh, final poll in 2022, the only team that brings back their quarterback is Michigan. Uh, so that's the main reason why I'm paying Michigan number one. I think Michigan uh, is going to po possibly run through their schedule. We'll see I'm in the uh, team prediction video, which, which could be out as early as tomorrow. Um, for Michigan because I'm going to go 1 through 25 on that. But uh, I like Michigan a lot this year. Let's just say that. I like Michigan a lot this year. I think this team could be the best team in college football. Number one, Michigan. Number two, Georgia. I know a lot of people are paying Georgia number one. The new quarterback coming in and with Michigan uh, keeping their quarterback, J.J. McCarthy, is the reason. And with Georgia bringing in Carson back, that's the reason why I have Georgia number two. Um, Georgia, I think, is going to run through the schedule. I'll come out and say right now, I think Georgia is going 12-0. I know um, I'm going to be making a video about Georgia, but I do have Georgia going 12-0, and and I'm going to be unapologetic about that. I know people are trying to pick them to lose against Tennessee, uh, more in Tennessee in a minute, but Georgia, um, probably the favorite to win it all again this year. Um, we'll see who I have winning the whole thing here in a month or so, but Georgia, number two. Number three, Alabama. Um, I see people disrespecting Alabama. I, I've seen people have Alabama as low as eight in their poll. Uh, listen, uh, give me Nick Saban over anybody in college football. I know some people are making the argument about Kirby Smart, and I do think it's a legit argument right now at who's the better college football coach right now. But um, not, not like resume-wise, just right now in the past like three, four years. I'm still taking Nick Saban, and as long as Nick Saban's at Alabama, I'm going to rank them high. And granted, I do believe this is probably one of the worst teams Nick Saban has ever fielded at Alabama, but at the same time, I think they're going to be favored in every one of their games this year. So we'll see what happens. Um, I do think Alabama is a team that could lose two to three games. But I also think they're a team that could easily go undefeated. So we'll see. There will be a video out on Alabama football predictions as early as the next few days. So keep an eye out for that. You'll find out all my opinions about Alabama. Number four is LSU. Uh, Brian Kelly, they bring back the quarterback there at um, LSU, um, whose name is escaping me. Uh, the guy, Jaden Daniels, uh, they bring him back. I mean, I expect LSU. They have it's basically a bunch of NFL players. The way they recruit, I expect LSU to be competing for the national championship this year. Last year, they were a little bit of a surprise team. I did not expect them to make it to the SEC championship game. Um, but this year, I think they have a great shot at it. They do get Alabama on the road, but at the same time, um, I mean, you they get Florida State early in the season as well. More on them in a second, but. Um, 
I think LSU, I, I could seriously see them going undefeated, making the college football playoffs, and winning the SEC. Number five is Florida State. I am really high on Florida State this year. Uh, I like what Mike Norvell is doing a lot. Um, in my opinion, I think Mike Norvell is a, is um, possibly going to be like the next uh, big-time coach in college football. I mean, you look at what he's doing there at Florida State. It took a little bit. It did. But at the same time, he's really paying together a great, a great team there, a great culture. Uh, they bring back 17 starters. They bring back a lot of players from last year's team, 10 and 3 team that kind of came out of nowhere because remember, uh, they started out the year what four and four, and then they pulled off a bunch of wins, um, including against teams like Syracuse, who made a bowl game. I know Syracuse is nothing right home about, but at the same time, um, they basically lost the, the the three games on their schedule that they lost four and three, not four and four. Um, since they only went 10-3. It was against 20, number 22 Wake Forest, number 14 NC State, and number 4 Clemson. Those are basically the only ranked teams that um, Florida State played last year. I think they, they're they going to get some big-time wins this year, um, and we'll see what happens. But um, I really do like Florida State a lot this year. I, I mean, as I said, they bring back uh, Jordan Travis, who I think is very really good. Uh, Mike Norvell, I think, is very – he. you're really seeing what he want the vision at Florida State that he had when he came into there. And let me tell you something. Last year, I was on him on the hot seat. But that win against LSU at the beginning of the year saved him. And they got hot at the right time when their bowl game went 10-3. and um, And I think that big game week one against LSU, we'll see what happens there. But – I am really high on Florida State this year. I, I am really high on them. I think they have a good shot to at least win the ACC. Number six. Number six is Penn State. Comes down quarterback play for them. Can Drew Aller be, Drew Aller be that guy uh, for Penn State? Because besides that, the team is pretty outstanding for Penn State. Um, I think Penn State, they're going to be favored in 10 out of the 12 games. I think the goal this year for Penn State isn't so much to make the playoffs, even though that should be the goal. Can they knock off Michigan or Ohio State? It's been, I think, since 20, I want to say, I'm not counting the COVID year, but since 2019 that they've knocked either one of those off. Um, so that needs to be the goal there for Penn State. I'm high on them. It just comes that it comes down to quarterback play. It really does for Penn State. And I think it's going to be good, good quarterback play for them. So number six, Penn State. Number seven, Ohio State. I am not high on the Buckeyes this year. I, I'm telling you guys right now, uh, it would not surprise me if the Buckeyes actually lose three to four games. I think the wide receiver core is as elite as it gets. Uh, but outside of that, they do have some good line play. But I'm not sold on the quarterback. I, I'm just not sold on McCord. I'm just not. I'm not sold. Or I'm just not sold on it. I'm not sold on the team in general. I'm not sold on Ryan Day. I don't think Ryan Day should be on the hot seat, but I do think his teams the past two years have been soft. I mean, hell, you had Northwestern last year basically out manhandled them on the line, uh, Ohio State last year. Uh, I thought you had other, other teams like Maryland manhandle them on the line. I thought you had... Um, I mean, I could go down the list of teams that just manhandle Ohio State on the line. I actually think that kind of continues. Um, I still think they're a top 10 team talent-wise, but I do, I'm do. i not high on Ohio State. And let me tell you something. That, that, paying Ohio State number 7 and saying I'm not high on them is a compliment of how well that program is. So, number 7, Ohio State. Number 8, Washington. Just comes down to defense, in my opinion, for Washington. Um, I do think they should be favored to win the Pac-12. I do think they are the best team in the Pac-12, uh, possibly. Um, I know Utah fans are going to have something to say about that. But Washington, the offense is unreal. The The offense with Michael Penix is as good as it gets. I thought Kalen DeBoer at the time was kind of outside-the-box higher. I thought it was going to be a bit shaky at first. I was wrong about that. Um, and I expect Washington to be competing for a college football playoff spot. And the Pac-12. So number eight, Washington. Number nine, Utah. As I said, Utah fans aren't going to like that. I think 
that Washington might be the favorites to win the Pac-12. But Utah is going to be right there in Pac-12 competition at the end. Um, they got to win that week one game against Florida. They got to. That can They cannot let Florida come into that their building and lose that game. You look at Utah. Um, I mean, they bring, I mean, Kyle Winningham, I mean, they just find ways to win. They just find ways to keep winning and keep trucking there in Utah and Salt Lake City. So, I like them. I think I actually think they're being kind of disrespected in some polls, if you want my honest opinion. Um, but you, they're going to be there uh, competing for the Pac-12. I don't think they're a college football playoff contender per se, but I think they're definitely Pac-12 contenders. Um, if you t- I mean, they're probably getting to the Pac-12 championship game, possibly seven two in the Pac-12. Um, probably we'll see how the schedule lines up when I do the video for them. But I mean. I like Utah this year. I think people are disrespecting them. I think they're going to be better than what some people think. Number nine, Utah. Uh, they've been kind of disrespected. Even I'm disrespecting them a little bit here. Number 10, Oregon. Uh, Bo Nix is the quarterback for um, Oregon. He might be the best quarterback in the Pac-12 behind Kale Williams. Uh, you also look at Dan Lanning. The defense is going to be better than what it was last year. I got to think that under Dan Lanning. I think Oregon, same thing with Washington and Utah. They're going to be competing for the Pac-12. I think Oregon is a bit more of a playoff contender than Utah, per se, because I think talent-wise they're a little bit better. But overall, I like Washington, Utah, and Oregon. Those are kind of, I mean, basically those three teams. If there's a team in the Pac-12 that's going to come out and uh, make the playoffs, and a Pac-12 that's going to be great this year, in my opinion, um, and it's sad saying that because after this year, at least USC and UCLA are leaving it um, to join the Big Ten. But it's going to be one of these three teams that, um, in my opinion, that are going to be winning the Pac-12. I'm just going to come out and say I know people are picking USC. I'll talk about them later. But um, it's going to be one of these three teams. And the good news about that, if you're the Pac-12, is, is that it's not UCLA or USC. That's one of these three teams. So that's my top 10. Number 11, TCU. Um, I'm going to come out and say right now, I don't think TCU finishes the year in the top 25. Uh, I could be wrong about that. You never know. I mean, Sonny Dykes, I'll be honest, if you prove me uh, absolutely and positively wrong this past season, 2022, I thought it was a retread hire. I wasn't high on the hire at all. And boy, did he prove me wrong. Um, and give him a lot of credit for that. But the team's going to take a step back. I mean, they lost the quarterback. They lost an number one ride out. They lost the OC to Clemson, which we'll get into here in a second. Um, now, granted, they did go out and get the Arkansas OC, whose name is escaping me, who's been around, uh, who's made a few stops uh, throughout uh, several schools in college football. But overall, I do think that... Um, I mean, you look at TCU, they're just going to take a step back in a Big 12 that's kind of, I'm going to be honest, wide open in my opinion. So, number 11, TCU. Number 12, Clemson. Uh, Clemson, it comes down to quarterback play for Clemson. Can the quarterback play be comp- could be decent? I think Clemson has a good shot to win the ACC. I don't think they're a college football uh, playoff contender. Um and I think Clemson, but it really comes down to Clay Cupcake, uh going ahead in the quarterback play. I like the I like getting Garrett Riley. They needed a change at OC. They got that. I think defense is going to be a bit better than what it was last year. I think Clemson overall they bounce back some. Not a college football playoff contender, but definitely a team that can at minimum contend to win the ACC. Number thirteen Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame I think is going to be fine this year. Um. Last year, kind of a slow start. This year, I don't see that or forecast that. Um, I mean, you look at Notre Dame, it really just comes down to what happens um, with them, with their schedule. They get Ohio State. Uh, they go ahead. I believe they, they get Clemson as well. They get USC. It's kind of a tricky schedule. I, I mean, so it really just comes down to can they win the games on their schedule. So, Number 13, Notre Dame. I do think they have a shot to make the playoffs, um, but we'll see what happens there. Number 14, Oregon State. 
Uh, if you want a dark horse to make the college football playoffs, this is your team right here, Oregon State. They get DJ Ugalagre, uh from Clemson in the transfer portal. I know uh, he didn't. It didn't really work out at Clemson. Listen, he's better than what Oregon State had last year at quarterback. That I could tell you. Um, and Oregon State went 10 and 3 last year. This is a team. Jonathan Smith is doing an excellent job. Uh, and they could very well repeat that record or even better. So, if you want, I know I said 8, 9, 10, that one of those three teams is what I'm picking to win the uh, Pac-12, but if there's a team that's not outside of those three, I'm picking Oregon State. So, number 14, Oregon State. And then number 15, Iowa. I'm high on Iowa this year. Uh, I have them coming out of the Big Ten West. I'll come out and say right now, I think they come out of the Big Ten West at least. Um... They great. They get uh, K. McMara from Michigan in the transfer portal. Perfect quarterback, and that will fit their system. I do think that will work out. I think Iowa has a good shot to get to get to 10, 11 wins. I really do. Um, number 15, Iowa. I think they're a team that definitely they might even have a punch, at least a little more than a punch a shot to win the Big Ten West. I am really high on this team. That's the top 15. Number 16, Kentucky. Uh, I'm high on Kentucky this year. They get the quarterback, Levery, from uh, NC State in the transfer portal. They also bring back the OC, who went to the Rams to be the offensive coordinator for a year. But he's coming back to Kentucky. They got him. Uh, last year, I thought it was kind of a disaster for Kentucky. Uh, quarterback, in my opinion, Will Levis, that's overrated. Um, and I think will be proven that will be proven in the NFL. Even though I am a Tennessee Titans fan, I do think that will be proven. Uh, you look at Kentucky. Um, I think they're the second best team in the SEC East. So not going to compete with Georgia. I think they could be anybody else in that SEC East. So number sixteen, Kentucky. Uh, it would not surprise me if they get ten if they could get to ten wins. Number seventeen, USC. Some people are probably going to think I'm underrating USC. Uh, too bad. So USC uh, gets a defense and actually gets a real defensive coordinator and not Alex Grinch. Um, I refuse to rank USC or acknowledge him as a playoff contender. Um, Alex Grinch is not a real DC. Uh, I, I don't know why the hell he eats the DC there for Southern Cal. Um, offensively, they're going to be great. I mean, they, you know they are Kara Williams' favorite for the Heisman. Defensively, it's going to be a complete shit show. Um, I expect a lot of shootouts for USC this year. I still think they get to probably 10 wins, but at the same time, the defense is going to hold them back. Number 17, USC. You can tell me talent all you want until Alex Grinch is fired and they get a real defensive coordinator in there. I'm not taking USC seriously. Number 18, Kansas State. Yeah, I know they lost Deuce Vaughn. I know they lost some guys on the O-line. They bring back the quarterback, Will Howard. Um, I got to think the uh, head coach there, whose name is escaping my mind. I got to think that um, Chris Kleeman. I got to think that he's going to have something up his sleeve. Um, I respect Kansas State enough to pit them in my top 25. I think they are going to be a top 25 team this year. Number 18, Kansas State. I'm pretty high on them, uh, despite them losing some pieces. Number 19, UTSA, our first uh, group of five team here in, in the uh, top 25. Uh, outside of that game against Tennessee, against UTSA, which, by the way, I'm going to say this right now, I think people are, are underestimating UTSA in that game. Um, UTSA, I think, has a good shot against Tennessee going to Neal and, win that and winning that game, if you want my honest opinion. Um, UTSA with the quarterback, um, it, it's in the uh, top wide right receiver. I know they're moving into the American. Uh, I don't care. Uh, UTSA, I think, is going to run through the American. I think they're going to win the American. I think they're going to be your group of five representative this year um, for the New Year's Six Bowl. And let me tell you something. UTSA, they have the type of the road runners. They have um, Frank Harris, the quarterback, and uh, the wide receiver. Um, I forget the wide receiver's name, but... They have a top rideout. It's one of the best rideout groups in the group of five, if not the the uh, best. I'm telling you this right now um, about UTSA. I'm looking at the schedule at Houston, at at Tennessee. Um, 
they get Tulane on the schedule. People are higher on them. I'll talk about them in a minute. Um, I, I'm kind of higher on FAU. When they have a road game against FAU. If, if I'm telling you, if they go into Tennessee and win that game, get, watch out. Um, Jeff Trailer will be a big-time college coach at a big-time program one day. And, uh, yeah, UTSA, I think, will be representing the group of five in the New Year's Six Bowls. I don't think they, they will make the playoffs, but it won't surprise me if they finish the season inside the top ten. That definitely will not surprise me. UTSA, number 19. Number 20, Ole Miss. Uh, you got to think, Ole Miss, the past two years, very quietly winning eight, nine games a season. I think that continues. The quarterback room is ridiculous for Ole Miss. Um, offensively, you know what they're going to do. Lane Kiffin, you know what they're going to do. Uh, defensively, they've gone better over the years. I, I like Ole Miss again this year. I, I think they can win. I think it will not surprise me if they get the 10 wins in the SEC West. That, to be honest, is a two-team race, and after that, it's wide open. So, Ole Miss, number 20. So, that's the top 20. Number 21, Texas. Um, yeah, I'm going to say this right now. I do not trust Texas. As a matter of fact, I am not buying into Texas. And one of my bold predictions this year is that Steve Sarkeesian gets fired at the end of the year. And I'm sticking to that. I refuse to pick Texas to win anything more than eight games this year. I, I, at best, they're going to be eight and four. I mean, you can tell me Quinn Ewers. You can tell me this offense all you want. You can tell me this defense and the talent and everything. I don't care. They got to prove it to me. The University of Texas has to prove it to me. I'm, and I've seen people rank Texas as high as five in their polls. I think that's insane. Uh, I think – if you if you tell me you, you ranking Texas 15 because you think the talent is too good, you gotta think they're gonna win 10 games. Okay, I could buy into that, even though I disagree with that. I I am not high on this Texas team at all. I, as a matter of fact, I'll will come out and say it right now, if people are he, pit banging them heavily to win the Big 12. They're heavy favorites. I'll take the field. I'll take the field over Texas. I have Texas ranked number 21 because of one reason, one reason only. I can't deny that the town is pretty good. Um, but, I mean, I've seen universities that have had good talent like this struggle and make bowl games, like the, 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 their rival south of them, which I'll get into here in a second. I am not high on this team at all. I think this team, I'm telling you right now, I will sell stock right now. On Texas, so number twenty-one Texas, number twenty-two North Carolina. Drake May, second probably the second best quarterback in college football. Gotta think that they're going in a ACC that's probably right open after Florida State and Clemson. You gotta think that they're going to be there at the top, probably getting to nine, ten wins with that offense. I think they'll be a bit better defensively. I know first half of the season last year was bad. They did take some strides throughout the season. I think that continues on the Gene Kizik's defense. I know they, they lose the OC and Phil Longo. That doesn't concern me. Number 22, North Carolina. I think they will finish the year in the top 25. Number 23, South Alabama. This is the other group of five team I have in the top 25. I'm high on this team. They bring back, uh, I believe, 18 out of the 21 starters. South Alabama, they basically bring back a whole roster, uh, basically a whole football roster there in the Sun Belt. And I, I think they're going to win the Sun Belt. I have South Alabama winning the Sun Belt. Um, they do have some tough games for Sun Belt standards on the road in the conference, but I'm going to say they win the majority of those. And I maybe the records that may, maybe the record at the end is at 10 and three. Um, Maybe it's not a good enough record to make a New Year's Six Bowl per se. But it would not surprise me if there's a discussion which team is better, South Alabama, UTSA. Some people are saying South Alabama. Because I think South Alabama is the more complete team compared to UTSA. Because UTSA, they're great offensively. But defensively, um, they're, I mean, they're, they're fine defensively, but it's nothing to really write home about. South Alabama... I'm telling you right now, um, watch out for South Alabama. So we'll see what happens, but 
I like South Alabama a lot this year in the Sun Belt. Number 24, Tennessee. I expect Tennessee to digress this year, um, regress this year. I still think they win 8-9 games. I don't trust the defense. Um, I think offensively they'll be fine. But defensively, I mean, you got to think. A lot of people were comparing last year's Tennessee team to the LSU team. There's a big difference in that LSU team. In that 2019 LSU team compared to the 2022 Tennessee Vols, the defense. Yeah, NFL players on that 2019 LSU team. There was no defensive. There was no NFL players on that Tennessee 2022 uh, team, and I don't think there's very really any this year. Um, and the, you know, let me tell you something. A lot of people, not a lot, but there are some people that are picking Tennessee to pull off the upset against Georgia. I expect Neyland to be rocking during that game. But I think Tennessee might have three, four losses going into that game. So, just keep that in mind. Um, number 24, Tennessee. And then number 25, BYU. Now, I'll be honest. This is pro I'm probably the first person that you're watching that has BYU inside the top 25. This is my surprise team of the year. BYU. And the reason why is some people are saying, oh, they're not going to be good enough to compete in the Big 12 right away or be taken seriously in the Big 12. Uh, I respectfully disagree with that. Um, if you look at BYU's schedules throughout the past few years, they play their fair share of Power 5 teams and have had success against them. Like, Graham, most of that success has been in Provo. I'll give you that. But they went to Neyland in 2019 and won that game. Uh, they went ahead and um, also went to Houston, a Big 12 team that they're going to be fa facing this year, and won a game in 2020. Um, they went to Wazoo and USC in 2021 and won those games. So they they beat number nine Baylor at home last year, a Baylor team that they're going to be facing um, this year in the Big 12, I believe. Um, actually, they're not. I have the schedule right in front of me. They're not. Uh, facing Baylor. Sorry about that. Miss uh, spoke right there. Uh, they went on the road and beat Stanford. I know some of these teams aren't that good th those years in the Power Five, but still, I mean, they bring back 15 starters out of 22, eight offensively, seven defensively. I like the head coach a lot at BYU. Um, I think this team's gonna be fine. I, I do, and I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna surprise some people in a Big Twelve that I think is pretty much wide open. I'm not saying they're gonna win the Big Twelve BYU, but I do think they get to eight nine wins. I mean, I think the over under for BYU is at four and a half. Last time I checked, uh, I will advise you if you're watching this video uh, to bet the over heavily and on that they will make a bowl game at minimum BYU. Uh, I like BYU to get to eight, nine wins this year. So th BYU is my big surprise team this year. Um, I think they're a team that people are really sleeping on. Number 25, BYU. So teams I consider. So I'll go through each of one of these teams that I consider. Some of them might get video. Some of them might not. Those top 25 teams will get videos, though, however. So let's get into it. Uh, I just went conference by conference, basically, for the most part, and uh, went from there. So, Louisville, new head coach and Jeff Brom. Schedule is easy, though. They, the offense will be, I think, pretty good. I like Louisville. actually maybe even cracked 10 wins this year. Miami. I think Miami bounces back some. I'm not going to say they bounce back to, um, to like, 10-11 wins like they were in 2017. But I can see Miami carving out eight, nine wins with their schedule. Um, I think they bounce back and uh, maybe they're a team for 2024. Pitt. Um, I, I respect Narduzzi a lot up there at Pitt. They always seem to know what they're doing there. You got to pit them as a team to consider. I've seen them in some top 25 pools, and I understand why. I respect it. SEC, South Carolina. Shane Beamer has outdone his uh, season expectations in his first two years in Columbia. Um, what's, what is it to say that he's not going to outdo expectations this year? I think people are expecting him to go 7-5 and five this year, South Carolina. 
Uh, if they win that game against North Carolina in week one, which I am picking South Carolina to win that game, by the way, um, watch out. Watch out uh, for, um, yeah, just watch out. A&M. Um, I'll say this about A&M. Um, I think they bounce back some. I don't think they bounce back as much as Miami because I kind of link those two teams together. They actually play each other in week three in Miami. A&M does. Um, A&M and Miami, I, I think Miami wins that game. But I think they bounce back. They get back to a bowl game. I don't know if they're going to be a top 25 team. Talent-wise, they are a top 25 team, Texas A&M. But um, it's a team I had did consider there. Uh, Wisconsin, if this was a top 26, Wisconsin would be number 26. The reason why I couldn't pull the trigger and win it is because they just got to prove a little bit to me. It's a new offense, new head coach. I think there's going to be some growing pains. But I do. I still think um, Wisconsin, Luke Fickle's first year of, at Wisconsin, which, by the way, I'll say this about the coaching hire. Um, Wisconsin had to get that coaching hire right because they're getting rid of divisions. And I can make the argument for Wisconsin – that they're going to be probably be a game worse than what they were if there were still divisions in the uh, Big Ten. So I think they got the coaching hire right. Offensively, it's a new system. Phil Longo, the uh, former North Carolina OC. Um, I do think overall, they, Wisconsin probably gets to eight wins, most likely, maybe nine. But and it is an easy schedule, which I think helps. But Wisconsin. I did consider them if it was a top 26 Wisconsin. Minnesota. Listen, say what you want about Minnesota. Take away the COVID year in 2020. 2019, 11 and 2. 2021, 9 and 4. 2022, 9 and 4. There's a model of good consistency there at Minnesota. I expect that to continue. I think they will contend for the Big Ten West title. At the end, I do think Iowa wins it. But we're not surprised when Minnesota finishes in second. Um, P.J. Fleck, um, I think what he understands is I can't recruit with the big boys, Ohio State, Michigan, and all of them. So, But he figures out ways to recruit. He gets big guys. I mean, Minnesota, I think it's the only team that could probably really hang in there in games against Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State. And, re and I've seen it. They get Michigan this year. Um, so I, I, we'll see what happens in that game, but I, I think Minnesota, I, it, I mean, would it surprise you if they go 9-4 again? I know that it's a new quarterback, but would it surprise you? Oklahoma, um, I'm kind of in wait and see with Oklahoma. I do think they improve, but at the same time, you got to think, they went 6-7 and seven last year. It's still kind of a retooling phase there at Oklahoma. I do think they played well in the bowl game, which was good despite losing to Florida State. But I think Oklahoma, we can see. Uh, Texas Tech, kind of a trendy pickup for our surprise team this year. I've seen, them as, I've seen them as high as like 14 in some polls. Um, they're Texas Tech. Uh, that's why they're not in my top 25. Um, I do not trust Texas Tech. I never have. And it's not because of this team necessarily. It's just over the past years, outside of, of a year or two with Mike Leach, it was always like, yeah, Texas Tech, they're going to finally maybe break through, and then they don't, and then they face plan, win eight, nine games. And they did that a lot on the Cliff Kingsbury as well. They had some moments where it looked like they were getting ready to pop off, but they didn't. Um, so it's kind of rain and sea mode. Um, I will say this about Texas Tech. They get a big game in Week 2 against Oregon at home. I think uh, that crowd will be rocking. But before that, they got a Week 1 game against Wyoming. And let me tell you something. That game just stinks. Uh, Snake Pit, known as Wyoming. Uh, you go ahead. You also... Um, and a Wyoming team that's going to be probably one of the better teams in the Mountain West, most likely. Uh, crowd's going to be rocking there in, in Wyoming. They got to get past that game before the uh, Oregon game. But um, that week two game against Oregon is going to tell you all you need to know about Texas Tech. Baylor, listen, if the trend is correct, odd, year, odd years of Baylor tend to be the good years. So just keep that in mind. 
And I do think Baylor bounces back some after last year as well. So, But keep that in mind. That's kind of been a trend with Baylor. The odd years have been the good years. UCLA, the, UCLA despite losing the quarterback, they actually bring back, and, and the running back, they bring back 17 starters. So I, I think including 10 on defense. So watch out for them. I don't think they're going to be necessarily competing for the Pac-12. But I could see them maybe pulling off a big upset, possibly getting to eight, nine wins. And I think that's very durable for UCLA. Arizona could be the surprise team in the Pac-12. Um, they were, they're not far away from where they want to be, Arizona. They're really not. Um, and they could be there this year. It would not surprise me if they rack up eight, nine wins. So keep an eye on Arizona. Uh, now to the group of five teams, Tulane, they're going to be in a lot of top 25 polls. I think they are going to be in the AP poll. I just think they lose too much. They do bring back the quarterback and Rory Fritz comes back, but I just think they lose too much to Lane. I, I, I still think they go eight and four, nine and three most likely, but I just think they lose too much. So. Keep an eye on them. Liberty, they're going to run through the Conference USA, Liberty. I don't see Liberty uh, losing a game in the Conference USA. They got the Coastal Carolina coach, which is kind of an interesting hire if you think about it because Jamie Chadwell, a lot of people thought he will be a Power 5 coach, but he's going to go to Liberty, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, but you look at Liberty, I mean, outside of Western Kentucky, who's going to beat them in the Conference USA? I mean, and I think they beat Western Kentucky. And I like Western Kentucky uh, this year. I think they're the second-best team in the conference, should I say. But who's going to beat Tulane? I, I mean, not Tulane, Liberty in the conference, should I say. Exactly. So, yeah. And, and, and we'll see what happens in the uh, non-conference of them. Boise State should be favored to win the Mountain West. Um, You look at them. Won't surprise me if they run through the Mountain West. Um, big week one game on the road against Washington. We'll see what happens in that game. But Boise State, probably a 10-11 win team, most likely. Toledo, a lot of people are high on Toledo. And you, I looked at Toledo before I was making this video. Um, and I'll be honest, I understand why. They bring back a lot of starters and a lot of depth from, for this, from uh, last year's team. I just have trouble, I just have trouble paying a team from the MAC. In my top 25. That's really, and that might not be fair, but at the same time, those MAC teams tend to, to, they tend to just beat up on each other, those MAC teams. I mean, the last real good MAC team was probably the 2016 Western Michigan team with PJ Fleck as the head coach. So, that's probably the last team that really made noise. I'm sure, I know they've had like a 10 win team, an 11 win, I think. A, Northern Illinois went 11 and 2 one year or something like that, or maybe 11 and 3. Uh, I think they won the 11 games one year, but I mean, we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Toledo is the team to represent um, the group of five. Uh, Jason Candle is a coach. I'm a bit surprised. This ha I'm, a, I'm a bit surprised he hasn't at least gotten offers some power five jobs. Um, maybe that changes this year for him, but. Toledo is a team I um it's definitely a team to at least keep an eye on. They they do have the type of team that could run through the MAC. And then Air Force, listen, Air Force is kind of like Toledo. Um in the mindset and the reason why I don't have Boise State and Air Force together on this list is because I accidentally thought Air Force was an independent for a second. My thought there, but um you look at Air Force, they bring back a lot from last year's team as well. Um, and remember, they were favored in all 13 of their games last year, and they and they went 10 and 3. I expect a very similar record from Air Force from last year. So the dark horse category, as I said, um, basically a team from each conference that I think c could come out of nowhere. Um, I couldn't make my mind up for the Big 12 between two teams, so I actually so I just threw both of them on there. So bear with me here. Uh, we'll kick it off with the SEC team for the dark horse. It's Auburn. Uh, I think it's going to be boom or bust with Hugh Freeze. I think it's going to be uh, boom or bust. I don't think there's an in-between. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I think it's going to be bust. I don't think the Hugh Freeze hire is going to work at Auburn. I just don't. 
Uh, he only won games at Ole Miss by cheating. Um, and even then, when he was cheating, it was, what, 8-4, and 9-3, and three, a few nice wins. I mean, I have Auburn going 5-7, and 1-7 and seven in the SEC. I do think they, they get past Cal. A Cal team that I think is going to be a little bit better than what some people think uh, they're in the non-conference on the road. But I think Auburn is your, it's the obvious dark horse in the SEC that could come out of nowhere. But I just, I'll be honest with you, I don't see it. Now in the Big 12, UCF, first team out of the Big 12. Uh, the reason why UCF isn't one here is because they have the former Auburn coach and Gus Malzahn, who is a Power 5 coach, who was coaching here for five in the past few years. I think UCF, talent-wise, I don't know if they're completely there to compete for Big 12 titles, maybe in year one or year two of this. But I do think that Gus Malzahn, I mean, UCF can consistently win 19 games in the Big 12 every year, in my opinion. And I think that could be a possibility in year one. I don't think talent-wise, maybe they're there. But definitely keep an eye on them. And then Oklahoma State, listen, you can always say what you want about Mike Gundy. I know that he's been under some controversy in the past few years. I know it's kind of a weird situation right now there in uh, Stillwater. You can always pencil Oklahoma State in for a bowl game. And I think that continues at least. And who knows? Would surprise you if Oklahoma State goes 10 and 3. Would that surprise you? It wouldn't surprise me. So, Oklahoma State, that's a team I would definitely uh, list as a dark horse that no one's talking about. In the Big Ten, I went with Maryland. You can call me a homer or all you want. I am a Maryland Terps fan. Um, listen, you look at Maryland, they do bring back the quarterback. The big issue with Maryland is going to be the line play. That's really going to be where it comes down to. Um, you look at Maryland last year, you can make an argument their two best played games were losses against Michigan and Ohio State. They went up to Ann Arbor, and th- and I, I came on here, and I was fired up about Maryland at, despite losing that, that game against Michigan. They lost that game 34-27 to Michigan. But I was fired up, and the reason why I was fired up was because Previous Maryland teams, at, because the way that game started was they fu- Maryland fumbled the opening kickoff, and I think like the second play, Michigan scored a touchdown and went up 7 nothing pretty early. Previous Maryland teams were have uh, folded up the 10 and lost that game 48-17 per se. Maryland hung in there. They fought to the end. They lost the game 34-27, but they competed to the end against Michigan. Uh, they competed to the end against Ohio State. I know people are going to look at that score and be like, oh, it was 43-30. Maryland had the ball down 36-30, driving down the field, trying to win the game. Tua Tagalova, not Tua Tagalova, Tola Tagalova, Tola Tagalova um, fumbled the ball. Ohio State returned for a touchdown. The guy out there, 43-30. Uh, Maryland was definitely... They definitely showed last year in the Terps that they could play with the big boys. I know the Penn State game, that was the other mess. I think that game's a lot closer than what it was last year. So, man, was the, the, the uh, dark horse team. Sorry I spent a minute there, but I am a Terps fan. Colorado. Um, Colorado of Deion Sanders is either going to be boom or bust. I don't think so much year, you need to look at year one. You need to look at year three. Uh, and possibly year two if this is going to be boom or bust. But it could be boom in year one. Who knows? Dion could come in and win and possibly shock the world. I mean, so that's why I pick Colorado as the dark horse. But um, I personally think it's not going to – this is my opinion about Colorado this year. I think they're going to get a big win or two. I don't think they're going to be anything – I don't think they're going to make a bowl game. But I do think they get some big upset somewhere. Possibly a second big upset somewhere as well. So, Colorado, um, that's the dark horse in the Pac-12. And the ACC is Duke. I believe in Duke. Uh, and I'll come out and say right now, I have Duke winning the week one game against Clemson at home as the big upset for week one. Um, I think Duke is a team, they were this, the dark horse last year for sure. And people are saying, oh, they're not going to have the same record. They went 9-4 last year. They're not going to have the same record. Um, 
baloney. They're going to have the same record as last year, in my opinion. Possibly even better. I mean, if you look at it, their four losses, they were competitive in all four of those losses. It wasn't like, oh, they had an easy schedule. They won't be up on the on kind of that easy schedule, but when they faced the real teams, they got ran out the building. That didn't happen. Um, they were in those games. I think Duke's going to be there. And if I had to pick a dark horse to win the ACC, it would be Duke. And the one team that no one's talking about that could possibly represent the group of five in the New Year Six Bowl, it's FAU. I'll be honest with you. I'm surprised Tom Herman, first year head coach for FAU. I'm surprised that's that's the job he got. I'm surprised he didn't get a bigger job than that. Um, now granted, the way he, maybe the way he's looking at it is we're in the American. Um, six conferences get automatic bids in the playoffs starting next year. We could probably get one of those automatic bids. With the talent they have at, down there in South Florida. Maybe he's looking at it like that. We'll see. Um, but I think FAU is a team. I, I think they're going to be good immediately under Tom Herman. Uh, that is an upgrade from uh, really Taggart there as the former head coach at FAU. So those are the dark horses. Uh, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Please hit the, please hit the thumbs up button. And please subscribe to your channel. I really appreciate you do that. Make the beast sign off.